Hey, what's going on? If you want to get a complete system that makes melting fat easy and is 100% automated, then I want you to go to the link that's on the bottom of your page right now. Um, YouTube doesn't let me make that link clickable, so you're gonna actually gonna have to type it into your browser. Or I also put a uh, copy of the link in the description, so you can click on that or type it into your browser. All right. For now, enjoy the video, and after you're done with this video, make sure to go to that link to get a complete fat melting system. Hey, what's going on? Today we got a really cool concept on nutrition, and this one concept is, is kind of like an inner game slash nutrition concept that's really going to help you to take uh, food more seriously. And, and what I mean by that is that food is a very socially acceptable drug, and that's exactly what it is, it's a drug. If you notice people who, um, the ultimate example, the ultimate proof that it's a drug is People go to the doctor and get a checkup, and the doctor says, if you don't change how you eat, you're literally going to die, or you're going to get diabetes, or you're going to get whatever, you know, heart disease, and people can't change the way you eat. That's how addictive food is, and that's why, just because it's a socially accepted drug, you shouldn't take it lightly. And, and it's one, it is the most powerful drug. I mean, there's, you know, the, the statistic is that 67% of Americans are obese. And then, you know, you have you know, the other drugs that, you know, maybe 10% of the population are addicted to. So it's the most powerful drug and we really need to take into account and, you know, realize that that's a, that's a drug and think about it. And there's four main ways that we use this drug. Um, and we, the four main ways are one, we use it socially. So a lot of times, you know, we'll use it as a way to be socialize with our friends or our girlfriend or our boyfriend or anything, you know, less as we get together, uh, we'll go out to eat or do something of that nature, go eat uh, dessert or ice cream. The other way is sleeping. Uh, people, you know, will use it to sleep. Maybe you use it, you know, right before you go to sleep. You can't sleep without it. Number three, we use it for, as a reward. But lots of times you'll finish doing a workout, you do something really good, and then you reward yourself with food. And last, uh, which is one of the most common, is boredom. You know, you'll be bored at home, and all of a sudden, the next thing you know is you just devoured a cake, or or you just you know, have nothing to do. Um, you, you got done with all the deeds you had to do for the day, and you'll start eating. So those are the four main ways that we use this drug and we're addicted to it. You know, we can't, we haven't realized another way to deal with, you know, our sleeping or our boredom or to reward ourselves and we use it as a drug. And when you think about it, you know, we, when you re realize that you're addicted to food is when, you know, you do something good and then you think, okay, now what can I eat? Now that's when you, you know you're sort of addicted to it. So we need to uh, find out substitutes for these four things, either the sleeping, the reward, the boredom, or um, social event, and substitute it with something that's better, that's not going to keep you addicted to food. All right, so those are the most common ways that people use food as a drug. Uh, they use it for social events, they use it to cure boredom, they use it to go to sleep, and they use it as for social events. Now, in order to find an alternative, uh, what we want to do is we want to find something that feels good, but is also good for you long term. You know, uh, food is kind of what um, it's a lower class way to meet these needs, whether it's to get out of boredom, you know, to get variety, to connect with people. It's a it's a low way to do it because it feels good for the moment, but it, it hurts you in the long term. You know, based on the stats of everybody who's obese and, and, and can can lose that weight. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to focus on activities that feel good for you, and everybody's going to be different but it's also going to be good for you in the long term. So anything from exercising, you know, maybe you, you really get into smoothies, like green smoothies or things like that, and you get into like preparing uh, healthy foods, maybe yoga, reading, like things that, it's different for everybody. Maybe something like taking a bath where you just relax, uh, you know, in terms of uh, having fun with your significant other, maybe you can go play sports, you can work out together. There's so many different things. It's going to be different for everybody. And, you know, in the worksheet below, we'll have some, you know, a list of activities that you can do, but it's important to, to find activities that feel good, that you enjoy just as much as uh, you used to enjoy eating certain foods to get out of boredom, that you enjoy them, but also are empowering in terms of that they're not going to you know, give you health, <laughs> health problems later on in the future. So that's what we really want to do. We want to identify what specifically you use, fo use food for right now. And then you want to find an alternative, and then we want to start to uh, integrate that into your, your 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 daily routines. So if you normally after you you work and you you're leaving work, you reward yourself with a certain meal. We want to replace that and reward yourself with something that is not gonna uh, hurt you and it's not gonna get you away from your goals. Yeah. 
And, mm-hmm. and, and on a more serious note, I know Alex mentioned a little, a little earlier that, you know, you, 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 there's cases, you know, you could, proven that, you know, it's an addiction that, you know, somebody will go to a doctor, uh, maybe somebody in your family or somebody that you know, and they'll tell them, you know, in the next five years, you will have a heart attack if you keep these eating habits up and they don't stop. So, so you really, uh, the main, the main point of this is that under, for you to understand that food is a, is a serious drug, it's a real drug, and when you can't take advantage of it, and uh, at the end of the day, if you take advantage of this drug, just like uh, any other drug, you can die from it, uh, and you have serious damages to your life and the way you live. So that, in a more serious note, I just want to say that, I'm not trying to scare you, but you need to understand that it is a drug, and uh, right it's now- It's just socially it's, acceptable. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? If you're enjoying the video so far, do me a huge favor and click on the like button below. Uh, you'll get your good deed for the day out of the way. Uh, it helps me out a lot. Also, go ahead and subscribe and leave a comment. Something as simple as good video or I enjoyed the video. Uh, it really helps me out with YouTube. All right, here's the rest of the video. So that's the only difference that's what makes it the worst part. And the only difference between this and cocaine, they, they honestly did research, you can Google it, uh, where they saw that food triggers the same part of their brain that serious drugs trigger. So that the dopamine, the, the addiction, the thinking about it before you have it, and then the, the big rush, and the crash, and then wanting to do it all over again. The food actually triggers the same exact chemicals in your body and brain as cocaine, except that you know your grandmother or your mom or, or they whoever, don't mind giving you, <laughs> exactly. giving you food instead they, of cocaine. They, they, mm-hmm. they don't offer you cocaine, you know what I mean? Like, but the, you'll get offered. I know when I go home, you know my grandmother offers me food 50 times a day. Same thing with my mom, always offering me food. It's just a socially acceptable drug. And it's like a, a common thing where after Thanksgiving, everybody goes and takes a nap. You know, everybody, you know, just passes out. And it's just a super socially acceptable drug. But, you know, if, if you're going to go out and you're going to implement, you're going to create this new lifestyle, we just want to prepare you for, you know, what's going to happen in terms of maybe other people uh, commenting on your new lifestyle. And, and it's a common thing with people that, that are alcoholics or do drugs. They kind of want to get you to do it with them. Yeah, so I, 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 you know, and I'm pretty sure that most of you, they are, you know, you've had it happen to you before that, you know, you'll be out um, on a, like, you know, at, with your friends, maybe at the bar or something in like nature, and you, you chose at night that you're not going to drink. And like, oh no, take a drink, take a drink. Or I mean, on a, on a more serious scale, maybe somebody's doing drugs and they, they offer you the drugs and they try to force it on you. They want you to do the drugs. And it's a, it's a social thing that they don't feel like good doing it without you doing it. And they, they want you to do it so they feel better about doing it. And then the day, it's your choice. And uh, if you don't want that food or want whatever they're trying to offer you, you don't do it. You know, it's, it's, it's a drug and we want to make sure that when, when we decide to eat food, it's because we want it. And it's not because, you know, we're, we're craving it or it's something that we don't need. Yeah, and it's the, the crabs in the barrel mentality where uh, you might have heard that if you put... Uh, two or more crabs instead of a barrel, they can't climb out the barrel because they'll pull each other down. So, uh, and in Australia, I think they have a saying called uh, tall, tall poppy syndrome or whatever, where like if you're growing more than you know everybody else, they try to chop you back down to size. So it's, 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 it's for whatever reason, we evolved and, and have that mechanism inside of us where we try to bring other people down so they don't get ahead of us. And we really want to prepare you. We don't live in those times anymore where we have to... Uh, you know, lower our standards and lower what we do to, to please, you know, our peer group. So we just want to prepare you that, you know, if it does happen, just expect it and, and just ignore it and just smile and be like, whatever, you know, we'll see um, how you feel later. You're probably not going to feel great. Uh, so we just want to prepare you for that, the crab in the barrel, barrel mentality. When you find more empowering alternatives and really make sure that if, if you have a, you know, girlfriend or boyfriend to, you know, not pushing on them. You don't want to be that, that guy who, who, who's pushing everything on everybody, but just kind of lead by example and do your thing and don't worry about what everybody else around you is doing. Just let them see how good you feel and, and all, all your empowering results, all your great results. And don't push this on anybody. And if they want to do it with you, they'll ask you and, um, and you can show them what you've learned. And, and the first step to being able to overcome something is being aware of it. So, you know, we've given you a bunch of, or we've given you, or you're about to get uh, a bunch of different, you know, techniques, uh, how to stop cravings and other, and other things as, like on top of that go with the food. But uh, this is one of the biggest steps is just being aware that food is a drug. And uh, now that we understand that, we can beat it and we can overcome it. Exactly. So download the, the worksheet below. Very simple. Find out how you've been using uh, food, you know, to cure boredom, social activity, whatever, however you're using food. Find, you know, one or two really empowering alternatives that you can use that feel good for the moment and are also going to help you reach your goals. And uh, make sure you do this immediately because it's it's a very uh, dangerous thing when you just follow the crowd and you just, um, just because something's socially acceptable, you know, doesn't mean that it's going to 
uh, make you feel good. The, the, the stats are very, statistics are very scary. You know, I think it's like 50% of people get heart disease and uh, however many people are obese, a huge number of people are obese. And it's because food is a drug and, and everybody takes it lightly. We don't want to be over dramatic here. We just want to you know, show you the stats. We just want to tell you the truth that just because something is socially acceptable, it's not right. And you have to become aware that Jason says awareness alone can be curative. Just you being aware of this um, can really help you to start making better choices. And, and you know, six months, uh, a year from now, you're living a totally different life on complete autopilot. A real quick, one more thing before you go. I want to make sure you know that there is no correlation between how hard you work and how much fat you melt or how much muscle you build. All right. There's enough science, enough data out there that there's absolutely no correlation between hard work and results. All right. There's a difference between movement and achievement. All right. If you want to learn my best tips, what I call the 5% hacks that allow you to get maximum results, maximum fat loss, maximum lean muscle gain, I want you to go to the link that's on the bottom of this page or you can click on the link in the description. Are right, you going to get a complete system for melting fat in an intelligent and streamlined system? I'll see you there.